Well, good morning, and happy Sunday to all this morning. Thank you for making the choice to be here this morning in person, and for those that are watching on Facebook Live, thank you for your presence also. It's a beautiful choice, and we make choices every day to do whatever we need to do, and this is what this first song will be highlighting for us. Today I choose. Today I choose to be grateful, so grateful today. I choose to be grateful, grateful uh, today. I choose to be grateful, so grateful today. I choose to be grateful, grateful uh, today. I choose to be happy, so happy today. I choose to be happy, happy. Whatever I choose, how my day's going to be. I claim what I want, because it's all up to me. Today, I choose to be peaceful, so peaceful today. I choose to be peaceful, peaceful today. I choose to be loving, so loving today. I choose to be loving, loving today. I choose to be joyful, so joyful today. I choose to be joyful, joyful. Whatever I choose, how my day's gonna be. I claim what I want, cause it's all up to me. It's all up to me. Today, I choose to be thankful, so thankful today. I choose to be thankful, thankful today. I choose to be grateful, so grateful today. I choose to be grateful, grateful to be grateful, grateful, to be grateful, grateful. Yes, what a choice. What a choice we make. So at the beginning of each month, we like to acknowledge birthdays. So if this is not your birthday month, we want you to sing to those right here and those online uh, our beautiful birthday musical gift okay so happy birthday here we go happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday you are wonderful happy birthday to you god is blessing you now God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. You are wonderful. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Good morning. And welcome, everyone here in the sanctuary and all of you that are online with us this day. Welcome to Unity of Daytona Beach, a positive path for spiritual living. I love saying that every Sunday, can you tell? A positive path for spiritual living. Sign me up. Here we are. So today's inspiration is dream. I turn my dreams into reality. Some of the most audacious, bold, History-making events began as dreams, born in the imaginations of those who understood the promise and potential of humanity and worked to realize their vision. Even if my dreams do not change the world, they have the power to change my life. 
Today I remember those whose dreams were fueled by their hard work, faith, and determination. I look to their example when my dreams feel far away and I'm running low on hope. I rekindle my dreams through my imagination, which keeps them vivid. My strength helps me remain committed to their realization, and my zeal renews my enthusiasm to work towards creating the life and the world of my dreams. Today's word is inspired from Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Take a breath with me. And please pray with me. Close your eyes if you choose. I turn my dreams into reality. And we allow those dreams to be audacious, to be bold, to be filled with our divine potential to know that indeed they have the power to change our lives. And we rekindle those dreams through the power of imagination, which keeps them vivid. Take a breath with me. And settle in. We are now in the presence of pure being and immerse in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and your power, O blessed spirit. And in your divine wisdom, now erase our human limitations. And from the pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law. And because we cooperate with that law, allow it to be so. Claim it as done. So it is. Amen. Amen. And will you join me, please, as we share in our Lord's Prayer and pray that prayer just the way our Master Teacher taught. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and we, we give our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Make me some room. Close by your side, love is born to love. Here in this place, hearts open wide, love is drawn to love. We'll find our song, sing it together, love is drawn to love. With harmony, everything's better, love is drawn to love. Love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, 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 oh, love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, 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 oh, love is drawn to love. Lift up your feet, stand up your voices, love is drawn to love. Follow your heart, you see the choices, love is drawn to love. Love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love. Love, love, oh, love is drawn to love. Love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, 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 oh, love is drawn to love, 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 oh, love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love.
We can clap. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's anchor our awareness and what it is that we believe here and we share it each and every Sunday, our statement of faith. Please join me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good omnipotent. Yes. Now it's time for announcements, and Marianne Berna has a special announcement. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Don't give her a week off. See what happens? No. <laughs> it is that time where we have the opportunity to welcome any guests that are here with us the first time, visitors, anybody here for the first time at all, please just raise your hand. Welcome, welcome. We have two. We're so grateful that you've chosen to be with us here this morning. Please feel the warmth that we have in our hearts for you already. May you find something here that wants you, invites you to come back again and again. Now we have a very special announcement from Mary Ann Verna. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I've got three pieces of really good news. First piece is Charlie Fleet, my beloved friend and musician for Unity and New Thought, um, is coming back to Florida. And the second piece of good news is he's bringing his lovely bride, Heidi. And the third piece of great news is I'm hosting him over the 4th of July weekend. My husband and I are going to let them stay with us. And I'm doing a concert, an in-home concert at our home. I'll have finger food and refreshments. And um, <laughs> I want to invite you, if you have any interest in coming, our seating is limited, but I would love to have you come and listen to his beautiful music at the concert. And uh, if you're interested, please see me after the service, and I'll tell you all about it. It's going to be July 2nd, Friday, July 2nd, from 7 to 9 p.m. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Friends, just, just as a reminder, I just want to share this with you. Please know that um, 2020 and part of 2021 has been really challenging for all of our musicians. So many of our New Thought and Unity musicians go around to the various different churches, and that's part of their livelihood. So it, it's been challenging for them. The good news is, Ken and I were just talking about this last week, that what have they been doing on some of their time off? They've been creating more good things for us. So, indeed, if that is yours to do, see Marianne after service. And we thank all of, all of those musicians that continue to share that. It's their ministry, folks. It's their ministry. And, and we receive the gifts from that. So we are grateful. Also, too, we have our prayer chaplains back inside today. So they'll be over here if you have any prayer requests after service. Uh, we'll just ask you to remain seated until you wait at your time to be with them. So they'll be over here after service. Um, ushers, we're still looking for some ushers, I believe. So um, if anyone cares to do some of that service, we invite you to see Marianne after service about that as well. Also, too, I know that we got to announce the fact last week that Nicole Mitchell is our new YOU sponsor. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you, Joy Kalis, sitting back there that's helping to share her experience, strength, and hope with Nicole and all of that. And friends, here's what I want to say. I want to say that my dream, one of my dreams, is to have two YOU sponsors. And what two? One female, one male. Did she say that? Yes, one male. So if there's a man out there that's feeling a little bit of a nudge, yes, it's true. We do have men in unity, don't we? We do. So if you feel that nudge, friends, that's what, uh, that's what I would like to see. But we'll take another woman as well, right? So <laughs> but we'd like to have one more, please. So hold that in your hearts. And I think that's it for the announcements. Yes. Thank you all. Joy fills every cell of my body, 
Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do what it does. Peace fills every cell in my body. Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do what it does. God fills every cell in my body. Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do what it does. Joy fills every cell in my body. Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do what it does. I allow spirit to do what it does. I allow spirit to do what it does. Oh, let's, let's take a breath together again as we allow spirit to do what spirit does. So we're just allowing, we're just allowing. So let's breathe. Just settle in. No at depth, there's no place for you to go right now. Nothing you have to do. Just allowing spirit to do what spirit does. To nurture you. To support you. To love you. So just notice your breath. And you watch your breath go in and you watch your breath go out. And you allow yourself to be fully supported right where you sit. Any places that feel tense physically in the body, just send your breath to that area. Every cell filled with spirit, filled with love, filled with peace. So breathe with me again. Settle in a little bit more. And we simply close the door on the outside world for just a few moments. We go within. Allow ourselves to be guided. Allow ourselves to listen. And take another breath. And we release that breath. Our master teacher said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. 
breathe into that truth. Release that breath. Allow spirit to do for you what spirit does. So perhaps in this moment, there's a realization or a knowing within you that peace resides. Peace resides within you. So in this time, perhaps you can set aside any thoughts that want to tell you differently. Any warring thoughts in your head, in your mind. They are false. We live from the inside out our outer world can tell us what's happening on the inside also so we're aware we notice shall we live in a more peaceful world Let it begin with me. Let me notice my words, my thoughts, my interactions. Let me be the peace. The world is calling for. My peace I leave with you. And we take that into the silence now. Take a breath in with me. Release that breath and just notice. Notice how you're feeling. Peace is a choice. Imagine peace. Embody the peace. Know yourself as peace. Take another breath in with me. Release that breath. And as you choose, you can open your eyes. So it is. Amen. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. 
above a stoneless skies. Imagine all the people living for today. Ah, ah, ah. Imagine there's no country. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion to. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us. And the world will be as one. Imagine no possessions. It's easy if you can. No need for greed or hunger. A brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people Sharing all the world, you, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will live as one. Tear down the walls We'll make a world that works for all One heart One mind One power In the name of love In the name of love. Thank you to Unity Worldwide Ministries for providing those videos for their themes this year. Of course, you already know is how to stay centered no matter what, and their focus is on the 12 powers. But before we begin this morning, so thank you to UWM, I also want to thank our beloved Carol Evans for being here for me last Sunday, for you, for God. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that uh, picture that we had up there, Jeannie, earlier for uh, the meditation, she didn't know I was going to ask her for that again. That's how we do. <laughs> We ask and we receive. So just take a peek at that with me for just a minute. So I'm going to ask us, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh, I'm going to give these guys a shot again over here. Can you imagine? See, they were first. They were like, they had no idea what that crazy lady was going to do up there today, did they? So, yes, we can imagine, can't we? Yes, we can. And when she was showing that earlier um, during the song and that one with that little child was standing up there looking, I thought, wow, that's us, friends. 
We may have forgotten about that just a little bit, but I'm here to help us remember this morning, that's us, and we're powerful and power-filled. Can you be with me in that this morning? Yes? Yes. So can you remember? Can you remember being a child and having such fun daydreaming? Some of us had some imaginary friends, and they'd go, who are you talking? Some of us may still have some imaginary friends. <laughs> we'll talk about that another Sunday. <laughs> we dreamed of being superheroes, princesses with some crowns maybe, tiaras, doctors, amazing athletes, outrageous daredevils. There were no limits, were there? So when I ask, and I thought to myself as I was preparing for this, when did daydreaming cease? When did daydreaming, looking like that child with that, filled with that wonder, stop and we got moved on into adult land <laughs> with our gotta do's and we were squeezing all of our daydreaming out the window, so to speak, huh? And why would daydreaming only be limited just to children? Why do we think it's okay for them and not for us? Why would it be considered a waste of time? Hmm, we'll see what we come up with today, huh? So I invite you into the power of imagination with me this morning. To dare to dream once again. To let go of the shoulds of life and to live in possibility. How does that feel to you? If you just say, I'm going to live in possibility, that made me feel good all over. I hope it does you as well. To let go of the shoulds of life and to realize once again, what is your possibility? Spirit, Because you know we already talked in meditation to allow spirit to start working through you, so it's going to happen, folks, <laughs> if it hasn't already. What is your possibility? What is that dream, perhaps, that you've left over onto the shelf that might be a little bit dusty right now? You guys know. It's all right. It's coming to you. So this morning, I invite us to allow ourselves the gift of breathing life back in to whatever we may have put back over there on the shelf. To breathe life back into the desires of your heart. Does that interest anybody? Just say it for my sake, would you? Does it interest anybody? <laughs> Help me out. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Listen, I don't mind prompting. I'm all right with that. Albert Einstein said, Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution, giving birth to evolution. How does that feel? It embraces the entire world. That sounds a little inclusive to me. I already like that. Well, imagination is one of our spiritual attributes, one of our qualities, described as Charles Fillmore Unity's co-founder tells us in the 12 powers. They make up our spiritual identity, don't they? We've been talking about it, and we're going to continue talking about it all year till we cover all 12. And imagination is represented by the disciple Bartholomew. The location in the body is right here between our eyes. No accident, right? So we can't miss it. It's right here. <laughs> and the color, it's represented by the color light blue. And I tell you those things just so that we start making connections and, and connect the dots a little bit so that perhaps when you see the color of light blue, you might start to think about imagination once again. Imagination is our ability to visualize, conceptualize, and envision. Uni Minister Sharon Connor shares this in her book, Adventures in Resilience. That your imagination is your capacity to form pictures in your mind's eye. It is said to be the architect and builder of our dreams and the scissors of our mind, our invisible paintbrush and palette of colors. I think that was a beautiful description. 
Friends, we all have this ability within us, and we all express this in our each unique way. There is no absence of it. But have you ever thought that, hey, I don't have that much of an imagination. I'm not that great at that. Let me be honest, friends. I've thought that of myself before. I thought, hey, I'm a linear thinker. I'm science-based, mostly in my former profession, dealing in concrete, factual terms, which are all okay, mind you, right? Something very measurable came to me with ease. But that's not true for everybody, is it? We're all different. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I had often thought of myself as perhaps not super creative, not easy to get in touch with that little inner whimsy, perhaps, that whimsical part of me that just allows you to think. You know, I've had some friends like that before, and I, I just love them. I always thought, oh, they're such airy, airy, zany people. I like those. Let me get up next to them, you know, as if that some of that could rub off on me. Because I didn't realize I already had it myself, right? Well, let me affirm for each and every one of us right now that that past of mine was error beliefs, false beliefs. Because, friends, our imagination is inherent to us just the same as every other 12 powers that we have. The very same way that I would say, hey, we human beings, we have two eyes, two ears, a mouth, a face. It's just the same. It's just that much a part of who we are. It's always present. But my belief and my definition of it were very, very limited. I was a bit constricted in my view of it, I would say which I thought as I was preparing this is exact opposite of exactly what imagination is, isn't it? Imagine, to me, imagination feels expansive, expansive. So if you just say the word imagination, say it with me, imagination, I think it has, even in its own accord, a very high vibration. So to imagine, to create, and realize or demonstrate anything what do we have to do? We have to first take a shift in our consciousness from I can't to what? I can. Yes, thank you. Very good. <laughs> so as I was preparing for this, I, I had the opportunity to go through, and I was looking at Michelangelo. And uh, I had a great time with him, honestly. So you're going to hear some of his quotes throughout the, the lesson here this morning. So here's one. Michelangelo said, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. Ugh. That's a mark we don't really want to achieve, I would say, right? <laughs> so let's call forth our imagination now. Imagination is that ability that many of us exercised as children Imagining ourselves into different possible futures as we proclaimed, I'm going to be a fireman when I grow up. Now, they're probably not saying that so much right now, but I'm going to be a tech mogul when I grow up. <laughs> Maybe they're saying that. Or I want to be the president of the United States. No thinking small, right? No thinking small. And then some of us, what would happen to us? We might get scolded by a teacher or a parent, right? Stop that daydreaming. Well, here's a story, friends, true story, told by Jack Canfield about a boy who used his imagination to create a dream. It goes like this. I have a friend named Monty Roberts who owns a horse ranch in San Ysidro. He has let me use his house to put on fundraising events to raise money for youth at risk programs. The last time I was there, he introduced me by saying, I want to tell you why I let Jack use my horse ranch. It all goes back to a story about a young man who was the son of an itinerant horse trainer who would go from stable to stable, racetrack to racetrack, farm to farm, ranch to ranch, training horses. As a result, the boy's high school career was continually interrupted. When he was a senior, he was asked to write a paper about what he wanted to do and be when he grew up. That night, he wrote a seven-page paper describing his goal of someday owning a horse ranch. He wrote about his dream in great detail. 
He even drew a diagram of a 200-acre ranch, showing the location of all the buildings, the stables, and the track. Then he drew a detailed floor plan of a 4,000-square-foot house that would sit on a 200-acre dream ranch. He had a lofty goal, didn't he? He put a great deal of his heart into the project, and the next day he handed it in to his teacher. Two days later, he received his paper back. On the front page was a large red F with a note that read, see me after class. The boy with the dream went to see the teacher after class and asked, why did I receive an F? The teacher said, this is an unrealistic dream for a young boy like you. I cringed when I read this story. You have no money. You come from an itinerant family. You have no resources. Owning a horse ranch requires a lot of money. You have to buy the land. You have to pay for the original breeding stock. And later, you have to pay large stud fees. There's no way you could ever do that. Then the teacher added, if you will rewrite this paper with a more realistic goal, I will reconsider your grade. The boy went home and thought about it long and hard. He asked his father, what should he do? His father said, look, son, you have to make up your own mind on this. However, I think it's a very important decision for you. Finally, after sitting with it for a week, the boy turned the same paper back in, making no changes at all. I wanted to start jumping up and down as soon as I read that. He stated, you can keep the F, and I will keep my dream. Yes. Monty then turned to the assembled group back at his house and said, I tell you this story because you were sitting in my 4,000-square-foot house in the middle of my 200-acre horse ranch. I still have that school paper framed over the fireplace, he added. The best part of the story is that two summers ago, that same school teacher brought 30 kids to camp out on my ranch for a week. When the teacher was leaving, he said, look, Monty, I can tell you this now. When I was your teacher, I was something of a dream stealer. During those years, I stole a lot of kids' dreams. Fortunately, you had enough gumption not to give up on yours. Whew. He finishes it with this. Jack Canfield now. Our imagination is the mental faculty, faculty that creates our future. Don't let anyone steal yours. It's the key to creating the life that you love. Take a breath. Let's clap for Monty. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I wanted to clap, breathe, cry, <laughs> and now be inspired. Now, what I want to say about all of that, I thought, what does that mean to me? What does that story mean to me? That story means to me, and I want to share with you, to trust yourself. Not only have you been given the gift of imagination, that spiritual attribute, but you as well have been given that gift of wisdom. We talked about that back in March. I'm sure no one has forgotten that yet. But each one of us receives the gift of divine ideas. How many ideas have we just kind of, oh, that doesn't mean much. I did a lot of that in my life before unity and my own spiritual evolution. I don't do that anymore. I pay attention, and I'm inviting you all to do the same. Honor your divine ideas. Recognize them. Notice them. Take them into prayer and ask. And if it's not clear, or you're like on the fence with it maybe, what do I say often? Precious spirit, what is mine to know? What is mine to know? You will receive the answer. And I always like to add, make it so clear to me that I cannot possibly misunderstand. I don't do that great with subtleties. I need to know to know. Put it right <laughs> Anybody else? I need, always, often need that spiritual two by four. How about you? And then I affirm, clarity is mine. Clarity is mine. John 1, verse 14 says, the word became flesh. This scripture to me affirms divine, the divine idea and divine order. 
which is mind, idea, expression, metaphysically meaning that mind is the representation of God, creator, the universe. The idea is our thinking. And the expression is the manifestation, what then is brought into the physical world. Our great example, Jesus Christ, honored, absolutely honored his divine ideas and his divine destiny and divine order. His life exemplified his embodiment of his desired future. He claimed his divine identity and lived it out. His embodiment of his life's purpose was to be the light to others, I would say, wouldn't you? To open the spiritual eyes of those who are blinded by materiality and to free those who are prisoners to their own limitations. Friends, we're the only ones that limit ourselves. Take a breath on that. We don't get to put anybody else's name on it. The truth is we can use our power of imagination to create our best and what? To create our worst as well, huh? And we've all experienced some of that, right? Have you ever been on your, you've been on your spiritual path somewhere, you're going along your merry way, and then all of a sudden you catch yourself saying, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that could happen? Why didn't I jump out there and say, what's the best thing that can happen? <laughs> we can say that more and more frequently now, can't we? What's the best? What's the best? Because after all, we're unity folks, and we're on a positive path for spiritual living, right? <laughs> it's all right. We do that, and it's okay. It's all right. But those places in my life, you know, I made a little bit of humor of it, but there's been some very serious decisions and things that came along my life in my life that that's the place where my thinking went as well. But what was running my show? Fear. I heard somebody say ego too, I think. But yes, fear. See, because fear and truth don't match up, do they? They do not. The truth is, fear came in for me either because I was too ego-centered or I didn't realize I deserved the best. There can be places all in between that spectrum too, can't there? And so I move on over into that. And those places where my first thought isn't, why don't I expect the best? It's okay, we don't have to be hard on ourselves about that either because what is that? That's simply because we still have this. We have skin, it's okay, we're still in our humanity. And we can embrace all of that humanity and all of ourselves and say, thank you God, thank you God. But more and more of our nature, we're stepping into the truth of more and more the true nature that we are, embracing all of that spiritual identity that is ours our divine inheritance, to be able to step out there and say, yes, I live in possibility. Say that with me. I live in possibility. I want to hear that again. I live in possibility. Uh-oh, I'm shaking off the thing here. Jeannie's going to be back over here with me in my tape. <laughs> Friends, our conceiving power is unlimited. Take that in for just a second. Our conceiving power is unlimited. And one of the things that I learned here in Unity a long time ago that I absolutely love is I want to call forth the highest and best. And the other part of that that I love is, or something better. Whatever I have in mind, or something better. Let's leave the door wide open. How about that? So all that good can just keep rushing towards us, yes? And how do we know? How do we know? Well, hey, is that the highest and best? You know, where's the clarity there? So we hold it up to Scripture because Scripture tells us this in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, is there any excellence? And if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. We have the promise, friends. Take a breath. Reverend Martella Witsit shares this in her book, Divine Audacity. The future we have been envisioning demands one thing of us, that we be who we can, who we, who can, <laughs> let me start that over. <laughs> the future we have been envisioning demands one thing of us, that we be the person who can live in that desired future. Think about that. Because I can't run out there and go, I want the best, I want the best, highest and best, highest and best. Oh, I'm not worthy. Right? We be that person that can live in that desired future. By the power of our imagination, I live as if. I become the personification of fulfilled consciousness. We are the living examples of our vision, of our dreams. She also said this, nothing has ever materialized that has not been first imagined. Hmm. And from Michelangelo, every block of stone has a statue inside of it. It is the task of the sculptor to discover it. We are the sculptors. We are the sculptors. Now let's receive this beautiful message from Michael Gott. We have two songs playing. I wanted you all to hear Michael Gott, Amazing Things. That was my dream <laughs> that I had put out there. And Jude, Jeannie will see if that can be so. Perhaps you need to close out that other one that was playing. Well, while we're waiting, I have another quote for us. What's up? What? <laughs> Depends on how long it takes to get that song up here. <laughs> Shoot some energy back there. I want y'all to hear that song. So it's coming. We're going to hear it. I know it. But in the meantime, I'm going to share another quote from Michelangelo. I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set it free. It's talking about the David. You still working on that back there? Okay. Well, I'm going to move forward with a poem that I was going to share. Now, it really belonged after the song, but a spirit has another idea. So here we go. This is from Darlene Parnell. It's entitled, Now is Never Too Late. It's never too late to be what you might have been. It's never too late to start to begin again. For every moment's now, therefore, it's not too late. Time's just an illusion. Your mind decides your fate. Have you written your book or sung your song? Or make the excuse that it might take too long? Have you fallen in love or climbed the peak? Or lie to yourself that you are just too weak? What dream of yours are drifting by? The, the regrets you'll have before you die. 
What adventures lie within your heart? What adventures lie, let them start. Since time is now, why not start? For moments do not wait, and time does surely fly. The only way to fail is if you do not try. Live the life you came to live. Now's the time to start. Be present with intention, living from your heart. Dream big, dream often from a solemn vow. I am my own fearless creator, living in the now. So take a breath with me, please. Ah, and just close your eyes for just a minute. Amazing, amazing things you will do. Amazing things. <laughs> place your hands on your heart. And maybe you can just turn the volume off, please. Thank you. So let's take a breath in again. And release that breath. And I invite you to anchor your awareness into this. Amazing, amazing things you will do. Amazing things. Take a breath with me. Release that breath. Dear ones, you are doing amazing things, and you will continue to do amazing things, things that can only be done by you. They are yours to do. Take another breath in with me. Release that breath. And I invite you back here with me. Dear ones, I behold the Christ that you are, in you, as you, through you. Let us call forth that power of imagination and live in possibility. Namaste. I can do anything I make up my mind to do. I've got a thing inside that I was designed to do. And nothing can hold me back if I don't want it to. Cause I can do anything I make up my mind to do. Cause if I can think, then I can dream. And what I can dream, I can believe. And when I believe, and then I will see. I can do anything, anything. I can be anyone that I decide to be. I have a great big dream growing inside of me. And nothing can bring me down. Cause I know what's right for me Cause I can be anyone That I decide to be Cause if I can think Then I can dream And what I can dream I can believe And when I believe Then I will see I can be anyone Anyone I can do anything 
I make up my mind to do. I've got a thing inside and that I was designed to do. And nothing can hold me back if I don't want it to. Cause I can do anything I make up my mind to do. Cause I can do anything. I make up my mind to do, cause I can do anything. I make up my mind to do. So nothing can hold us back, not videos that won't play, not music that plays when it shouldn't play, nothing, 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 right? <laughs> Join me, please, where we should have the opportunity to share our gifts and our tithes. Just, let's just be in gratitude. Thank you, God. Yes, thank you, God. Please share our affirmation of abundance with me. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And it is so. Oh, once again, just pray with me. Yes. Take all those breaths in and release all of that and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to remember once again our spiritual identity, to call forth that power of imagination and to create the world that we desire to live in to blow the dust off of any dreams that maybe we said, hey, no, not possible now. And instead we affirm, we live in possibility. And we send forth all of these gifts and these truths out into the world to be God's love in action. And so it is. Amen. Join me, please, as we share our prayer for protection with one another. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So it is. Ken. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God, our Creator, we are family. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin.